<laughs> I'm here with Justin Jacobson of Restoration Games, uh, who've put out uh, sort of this uh, resurgence of these uh, titles that had been uh, lost a little bit to the annals of gaming history. And uh, we recently reviewed Indulgence, and we really, really liked it. And we've got uh, reviews of Downforce and, and Stop Thief coming out soon, and I won't spoil anything, but we really, really liked them. Um, and, uh, and we were hoping that we could just talk to you a little bit about restoration itself and sure. the idea behind it and, and where it is now and where you see it going. Sure, happy to do that. Um, yeah, so it's, I, it's something I sort of had in mind for a while and really the back door I got into the uh, business end of things was I was, I've been Rob's attorney for many years now, <laughs> going back to when he was at Hasbro That's and funny. he wanted to leave and he was sort of curious about what whether or not he could, he had just finished doing Risk Legacy and he sort of wanted to know what he could do after he left. And what turned out to be Seafall, ultimately Pandemic Legacy came first uh, in publishing order, but I wanted to know if he could do that. And so I started working with him. It's kind of funny, I used to, uh, I went to I've been to Gen Con many, many times, and uh, I'm a lawyer by trade, and I always uh, used to go and give a seminar, just sort of like a legal Q&A, come and ask all your legal questions, and that way I could write off the trip. <laughs> And uh, sure enough, after one of uh, my little Q and A's, uh, Lindsay uh, Davio came up, and uh, she—that's Rob's wife. She worked with Rob. She's also at the Hasbro, and she's a. Our, well, I'll get into that in a second. But she came up afterwards and basically said, "My husband's getting ready to leave Hasbro. He's got this question. We went to dinner, uh, and uh, sort of the rest is history." Mm -hmm. And uh, but I've been working for him for years, uh, with him for years, and. Um, I sort of had this idea. I've always wanted to do a licensed game, like a licensed. Uh, I used to do a D20 publishing uh, back okay. in the third edition era during the D20 license. That's where we cut our teeth. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I always wanted to do a licensed game. And I, when then Kickstarter started to come to the fore, I said, "Well, you know, it would be cool if you did. A, you could do a licensed game, but like file off the license and then just sort of make it your own." And my idea was to do a Star Wars Queen's Gambit. Because everybody loves that game, mm -hmm. but it's never coming back because of the license. And although they sort of did the Star Wars Risk thing, mm -hmm. um, but in that way. But I thought you could redo the game because nobody loves Episode One. Like no one buys that because they're huge Jar Jar Binks fans uh, or it's Christopher accurate. Lloyd fans, right? I mean, that's not why people like that game. Oh, bake, all the chemistry of baking soda and water. Right. But go on. <laughs> so I felt like that would be a cool way to do it. You like say, oh, we're going to bring back Star Wars Queen's Gambit, but it's not going to be Star Wars; just merely Queen's Gambit and change the theme. And and uh, so I happened to be talking to Rob about this, and he said, "Well, you know, that's cool, but uh, you can't do Queen's Gambit because." And there was all this, we started talking about all this stuff. He said, but and we start talking about the games that we liked from our childhood. Mm -hmm. And there's a game, an old game called Pathfinder that Rob always liked, which has nothing to do with the, the RPG. The RPG right. It's an old game from the 80s or maybe even 70s. It's like a, a maze building game mm -hmm. uh, where you, it's sort of like a competitive maze building game. And then you're trying to work your way through. And he said, I used to take that game and used to make all these. Uh, he, that's what he started, first started house ruling his own game. And then I started talking about games I liked, and I was like, well, let's you know, try and get some of these old games and bring them back. And as the lawyer, I talked about you know, ways we could do that and negotiating licenses and dealing with the trademarks and all this stuff. That's sort of what I bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And then Rob, of course, an amazing designer. Yeah. And that's what he brings to the table. And so we you know, sort of talked about it. And it's funny, I, I'm friends with uh, Tom Vassell. I live pretty close to, uh, to Tom. And uh, I see him at game days every now and again. And he's always saying, people always say they want to start a game company. He's like, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I told him, I said, Tom, I, I want to start a game company. He said, what does, I said, wait a minute, hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> I said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these old games that are out of print. We're going to modernize them and bring them back. Uh, and I'm working with Rob Davin. And he's like, oh, I guess that could work. <laughs> so <laughs> that was sort of like the first hurdle. If we, we passed the smell <laughs> test from Tom. Um, well, good. <laughs> yeah. So it's, that's sort of where the idea came from, is taking these old games from our childhood that a lot of people who are just getting into the hobby don't know about any of these old games. Right. And at the same time, we're, we don't want to strictly do reprints. Um, you know, Stop Thief was like our first Kickstarter, sort of our, our first, one of the first three games that we did. And it's a perfect example. There's some amazing, innovative, groundbreaking stuff in that game. The, using the electronic device, one yep. of the first games to do it. Audio clues, hidden movement, you mm -hmm. know, all that stuff was very new. And still very cool today. And a game like Spectre Ops is like, you, it's a very close cousin to that. But 
it has roll and move, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> and in a really bad way, too. Like, if you just roll twos Crippling. all night, you are just going to have a bad, bad game, right? Um, and, uh, you know, the cards, oh, lose a turn card, you know, that kind of stuff. So we, we've gotten better at doing everything else, right? We've, we, we make better cars than we used to make. We, uh, you know, <laughs> make... I don't want to say better, more technologically advanced uh, movies and things like that. I'm not talking about the writing and things like that. Um, but we've learned a lot about game design. And so it stands to reason that we would be better about sure. or figuring out ways to sure. solve problems that older games didn't even occur to them that were problems. So that's the idea is we, we look at these old games. We say, what is the soul of that game? Like, what's the thing that everyone loves about it? What's the cool? What's the hook? Strip everything else away, turn that up to 11, and then build a good game around it. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea. Um, and it's just, it's sort of been working. I mean, you know, people are sort of feeling what we were feeling when we first decided to try and do it. And that's very gratifying. I mean, I'm super excited about that. And, and we're super excited, too, because, um, you know, as people who played games in their, in their childhood, but also came very much back to the hobby uh, at this point during this like renaissance of of uh, certainly in the American board game scene and and the the shock waves from uh, our market opening and uh, reverberating with Europe and we're all going back and forth and just everything's you know great and the the, the pockets are opening quite a bit uh, it's uh, for us for you know for gameosity um, really really gratifying to see some of these old games coming back with these modern sensibilities now being applied to them. And so, what is the... When, when you talk about finding the soul of a game and, and, and really diving in, what's the hook there? Is it like going into the nostalgia banks in your in your brain, thinking about, like, what were the beats that felt really gratifying? Or, yeah. like, rules that felt really cool, that sort of thing? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's different. Every game is different. Um, from all standpoints, from the game design standpoint, from the legal standpoint, uh, from the something we probably art think about, standpoint, right? <laughs> things like that, they're all different. They're all unique in their own way. Um, so one of the things, first things we did when we made our website is we said, tell us what game you want to bring. It's right on the top of the website. Mm -hmm. um, and we just recently added, uh, which I'm happy about, is why, right? And so I'm getting all these amazing stories now. And it's and I hear, it's, I, well, I'll, I'll see people at cons and they'll come up to me and they'll, they'll thank me for like what we're doing like that's super gratifying and amazing in a way that like there's lots of great game publishers out there but there's something special that so what we're doing is lets people connect uh, obviously to what got them interested in board games or there's some childhood memories they have and things like that in a way that uh, the nostalgia is great for that but also when we're designing the new games we have to sort of fight that nostalgia in a way to make the game as good or better than you remember it was, not than it actually was. Like, if a lot of these old games, if you played them today, you'd say, oh, I remember why I liked it, but this game's really not... It's creaky, <laughs> it's right? Clunky, it's got right? some issues. So we that's, it's just a matter of smoothing those things out, polishing it up a little bit, and figuring out what works. And, you know, and I, like I said, I mean, with Rob on the team, mm -hmm. uh, obviously he's great at that. <laughs> and, in fact, that's a lot of what he did at Hasbro was... They would come to him and say, "Hey, we got the Harry Potter license. Make a clue game out of it." You know, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so we had to figure out neat ways to do that. Um, but even taking the, you know, taking the idea of like the movement rules from Stop Thief right. and and turning it from dice into the the card, you know, the hand of cards and the special effects that that you know come with us. It's just a really, it's a really smart take. Um, and I'm totally going to fanboy for <laughs> for a bit because I'm I'm a huge fan uh, of what you've done so far and um, and what we're really excited about is to see you know what's coming next. We know Fireball Island is is gonna is gonna be the next big one, um, and I got a million questions about that. And I don't know what you uh, what you're prepared to share about it and uh, where well, it is. We'll see. Yeah, we'll find out where the line is. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's interesting. We get all these requests. I have a huge spreadsheet with every request that comes in. Um, and we've got for everything, like the most obscure things you've never heard of. I'm always, I, that's one of my favorite things too, is I'll see people that put in a request for a game that I've never heard. I'm like, wow, what, what is that? You know? <laughs> and I go look and I was like, man, there's something cool there. And we literally have like hundreds of games on this list and every one of them could be like brought back as a really cool game. Um, they all have something interesting or some, something that was cool back then that you don't really see it hasn't been redone mm -hmm. um and things like that so so what's yeah. the, what's the soul of fireball island 
<laughs> what did you find in there? I think Rob put it best when we announced. He said, Kinetic Death Machine. <laughs> and First so, of all, that's a great band name. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, it's sort of like miniature golf, uh, roulette, and, uh, you know, bees. <laughs> uh, fire, I love it. Right? <laughs> um, yeah, so... The, th- the really interesting thing about first, so first of all, it was far and away the most requested game. I mean, just I by a country mile. Um, so yeah, so we and we actually wor- we had been working on that license for over a year. Mm-hmm. So the funny story is, this was kind of a running joke. When we first reached out to the license holder, he said, "Oh, your timing's propitious," you know. <laughs> And as a lawyer, I knew what propitious you knew immediately meant. what that meant. Uh, and I, so I joked to Rob, I said, "Oh, it's propitious." So we literally for months and months we were going back and forth, and then we'd get one little like e- sliver of an email that had like a well, and then oh, propitious, you know. Propitious. <laughs> so we kept joking back and forth about propitious, and then finally we just it worked. It all clicked into place, and 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 it fell and it fell into place, and uh, so we got got to start working on it. We sort of had ideas. We've been going back and forth, and uh, we've been working on it uh, for long before we announced it. Um, gameplay is almost the easiest part of that. The interesting thing about the old game is it's sort of, and this it's weird. This is true with some of the other games. So, like Downforce, a classic example. Uh, Rob joked the first thing he said was, "There's good racing games out there, but people take the fastest sport and turn it into the slowest game, yes, right?" Yes, I. <laughs> and so I he's like, "We like need to make a fast that. racing game, yes. right? That's actually still strategic and not just a crapshoot and all that." But um, so it's the same thing with Fireball. Is interesting is you have no control over your player. You roll the dice and you move your guy, and that's it. And you don't have any control. Mm-hmm. Or there's no agency there or anything like that. And whereas the marbles are very predictable. Um, you have complete control. You like if I want to put it down this marble shoot, I point Volcar that way. It comes down. We know exactly where that marble's going, and mm-hmm. we know what it's going to hit. And so it's kind of fun to see the kinetic uh, aspect of it, but it's very predictable. And it should be again exact opposite, right? You should have a lot of control over your player, uh, so you know where you're going. You can make choices about this path is riskier, but high reward, right, and right, so right. forth. But the marble should be like a little random, a little like chaotic. a little mysterious, right? Frightful. Chaotic, exactly. And so that's sort of the first thing we did. Is and so the other cool thing about this is we have to figure. So the original board is this huge vacuum, vacuum form, form tray, yeah. and it's one big piece, and the box is exactly that size because you know you can't make it any smaller. Well, you cannot use that box today. Like people, stores won't take it. No, it's no, too they big. Won't. They, I mean, so we somehow had to find a way to make the board bigger and faster and cooler and better looking and fit in a smaller box. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing we did, and this was actually one of our, the other people we work with is uh, Mike Gray, who a uh, legendary uh, man uh, worked at Hasbro for a number of years as the head of their uh, uh, brand, uh, game acquisition, head of game acquisition. So all, And uh, also a great designer, Omega Virus, uh, Dream Date, uh, or Mall Madness, I forget, a bunch of uh, Fortress America, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so and he actually fort- fortuitously lives like very close to Rob. Yeah. And re- this is another great little side story. I went up to visit Rob after we started working on this, it's and we drove over to uh, Mike's house, and we went to his basement. And I'm telling you, it is like the end scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> he's got every game you and like collectible stuff, and he's got the original art from Dragon Master and stuff. Wow. Amazing stuff. The original uh, box cover art from Fortress America and stuff like that and I'm going through the just racks of games we're going through just trying to get ideas and stuff and I come across one that says unpublished hero quest prototypes and I was like ah, oh my know? god <laughs> you know this is stuff like designed by famous RPG designers and That's really wild twisted. stuff so um, yeah that's awesome so uh, it was, they went over and play tested Fireball Eye with Mike Graham he said you know what you should do you should take three trays smaller trays and stack them like, you know, the light bulb ones that went off. So that's where we're working with now. We're not, it's not the finished final design yet. So I can't guarantee anything yet, obviously. But so the current plan is to do three separate trays. Mm-hmm. So we have two on the side and then one goes over the middle and then it's going to have these sort of bolsters on the side to, you know, make it look nice with some art and keep it all stable and everything. But the end result is that it stacks into a box that's half the size of the original. And yet, when you assemble the island, it's almost as big a footprint, maybe a little bit shorter, but twice as tall. Oh, whoa. And of course, more gravity is more speed. For the marbles, you know? yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, gives us more room to play with and things like that. And now we've got like paths, 
So now we what we're working on is we have a pass that split, uh, pass that what might knock other marbles, and then that starts that marble going. There's a little like area where you don't know where it's going to end up. This is going to be glorious. And so now the a huge design challenge. In addition to making it look cool, make the artwork, which is you've got to do 2D art and then put it on a 3D island and line it up, and that's all pretty challenging. But now we've got to the point where, so now that we're doing this, we're at the point where, okay, we've got these two baths and the marble's going here 50-50, but we need it to go 80-20, so we're like shaving it an eighth of an inch to the right, you know, to make sure we get the marble distribution the way we want. So that's a super interesting design challenge. But what that lets us do is, now we can add all these interesting choices to the game, right? Uh, so, you know, I might go this path, which I think the marble's likely to go that way. And then on the same token, uh, you, it, it's your turn to roll the marble down. You say, well, if I roll it down this path, it's most likely going to go here and knock out, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Elena or whatever. But my guy is over here, and there's a small chance it might bounce this way and hit my guy. Do I roll it down that way? or do Right, I, you know, right, so right. So that's what we're risk reward is exactly. even more meaningful. Um, and then also, that makes the part where you're rolling the marble down much more exciting. You're like, wait a minute, watch, waiting to see where Which the marble goes. Go, right, right. right. So uh, that's what we're working on now. And then uh, the other thing we wanted to do is advance the timeline a little bit and develop the narrative a little more. Um, make it more a little more interesting. We just didn't want to do a repeat. Mm -hmm. So in the original game, it's the explorers going to the island sure. to steal the gem. And I said, well, what if you know uh, Volcar gets really pissed off that you took his gem, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he puts a curse on you, and a curse on the island. And he sort of that lets us sort of like make everything bigger on the island. It's an explanation for the uh -huh. island is like more stuff going on, right? Because right? he's he's upset now. He's angry. I probably shouldn't have said his name. That's not a good idea. <laughs> uh, but anyway. Uh, so we developed this idea of this uh, company comes along and buys the island, Ember Corporation. So they buy the island. And uh, oh, I love it. they're going to set up a resort on the island. You're the golden ticket winners. You get to be the first guest on the resort. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Have a good time. And don't worry about that over there. We've got top, pe top people That's working fine. on it. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Um, so... We're still developing the game day and the narrative and sort of fine-tuning everything, but that's the gist of it. And then it'll still be, you know, you're moving around the island trying to gather treasures of a certain sort. I won't go into details yet too much about that because we haven't <laughs> narrowed that down. And um, at some point, you better get your butt off the island. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much it. That's I mean, so cool. I'm, I'm super looking forward to it. Um, and my, my last real question is, what's after Fireball? Okay. <laughs> well, I have nothing official to announce, and Rob will... So, this is our classic dichotomy. Like, I constantly want to blab, and Rob's constantly glaring. <laughs> and uh, so I have to keep Rob happy. I've met um, Rob. He does, I mean, he seems very nice. Oh, when he glares. He'll give you the glaring of a lifetime. Um, right, well. But, so we have... Uh, Three more games we're working on. Good. Uh, for next year, uh, officially. Um, and then there's one or two that are a little bit more longer term. They're probably going to be in 2019. I will say we're working on one game um, that will be almost as big as Fireball Island, I think, when we announce it. It's a pretty big get for us. We're excited about it. Um, obviously, not even close to ready to announce anything for that yet. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> another one is one that I I'm really excited about. Um, and then we have a very small one, a very small little game. Uh, that's a, just a, it's a little filler game. It's going to be, um, and, uh, you know, we're working on that. We, we're probably announcing that one pretty soon. I just don't know. Well, I have to say, even the, the small, I mean, of the three yeah. games that are out now, it's like, you know, Indulgence is this is this little trick taker. And I, I yeah. mean, just I really, really like it. You know, the presentation is awesome. And, you know, it, well, thank you. it holds together very well. It, that's we're committed to. So we always said when when Rob and I did this, we didn't want to just sort of be another game company. Um, we wanted to look like a year two game company in year one and a year five game company in year two. Um, so high production values and you know not cutting corners and things like that. So that's something we're always striving for. I did I didn't mention there's one other project. My so we each have our sort of pet project. Mm -hmm. um, Rob's was really down for us, actually. It was Daytona 500 he wanted to do, and we did that one right out of the gate. Mine, sure I've been like working it. on myself for uh, about a year now. <laughs> so hopefully I'll get to announce it next year. Um, that but it's awesome. uh, it's an obscure game, but it was one of my all-time favorites when I was a kid. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to announcing that one. All right. And it's going to be totally different from any of the other games. 
totally so I'm, different. I'm definitely not going to mine, uh, you know, game demographics from the age range that you would have been playing games as a kid to try and figure that out. I'm not going to do that at all. <laughs> Thanks for giving us a little bit of time and a little My bit pleasure. of insight into restoration games. We think what you guys are doing are fantastic, and we just can't wait to see more. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey there. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, give us a like and hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you next game.